If you watch this video all the way through and see all the new features in Ironwell 0.7, I bet you'll agree that this is the best Quake engine ever. Iron Whale is the work of graphics programmer Andre Drexler. It's a fork of the popular Quake Spasm engine, with improvements borrowed from Quake Spasm Spiked and VK Quake. But saying it's just another Quake Spasm fork doesn't tell the whole story. Iron Whale is a paradigm shift for the venerable Quake engine, bringing to it modern rendering techniques that vastly improve performance, while at the same time adding a huge list of usability features. Add in new features for mappers, and this is an important landmark for the Quake community. Ironwell 0.7 is finally available, and it has an absolutely massive list of new and improved features. There's a lot to talk about, but let's focus on performance first because this engine is amazingly fast. The original Quake Spasm was released in February of 2010 and utilizes a mix of OpenGL 1 and 2 for its rendering architecture. This means that a huge range of graphics cards can play the game on nearly any PC or laptop, including Mac and Linux builds. But as community maps and mods have grown larger and more complex, performance on many lower spec systems has started to suffer. Quake Spasm uses the CPU to generate a list of visible triangles, which are then sent to the GPU for rendering. Iron Whale uses OpenGL 4.3, allowing for a compute shader that takes all those triangles off the slower CPU and renders them directly on the GPU where those tasks are more optimized. Requiring OpenGL 4.3 eliminates older video cards. If you have an AMD or NVIDIA card from 2010 or newer, you should be fine if your drivers are up to date, but cards from 2012 and newer are recommended. PCs with older integrated Intel graphics might have issues due to lack of driver updates, but Iron Will does have code workarounds to address some of these. Machines with more recent video cards will see massive frame rate increases. This is especially true if you have a slower CPU, and Iron Will is a great choice for owners of high refresh rate monitors as well. Here's a look at a section of Tears of a False God from Arcane Dimensions running in Quake Spasm 0951. Note that this part of the map has a massive amount of polygons. The CPU is an AMD Phenom 2 X4 955. The system has 8 gigs of RAM and the GPU is a Radeon HD 7850. Quake Spasm is averaging 51 frames per second here. Now, take a look at the same system running Iron Whale 0.7. The average frames per second ranges between 494 and 416, depending on transparency settings I'll cover later in the video. Here's another example from Andre's Twitter feed. It shows tiers on a 15-watt Intel i5 from 2014 with integrated graphics running at over 100 frames per second. Sadly, since Apple ended support for OpenGL at 4.1, Iron Whale is mainly for Windows users, but it also can be built on Linux. Andre has stated that one of the main goals of Iron Whale is to bring Quake into the 21st century in terms of usability. And this long list of quality of life features really proves that point. <laughs> First of all, installing Iron Whale is really easy. Just dump the folder into your Quake directory and launch the EXE from the Iron Whale subfolder. I like this option since other flavors of Quake Spasm include a bunch of DLLs and other files that clutter up your Quake directory. But there's another even easier installation option if you have the Steam version of Quake. Simply unzip the engine anywhere on your hard drive. Iron Whale will find your Steam files and mount the Night Dive folder so that all your add-ons from the remastered version of Quake are available in the Mods menu. If you select Remaster, you'll be running the new version of Quake that includes the mission packs and official add-ons like Beyond Belief. If you select Original, this will choose the id1 folder as opposed to the re-release folder. This also works with the good old games and Epic Store releases. If you have multiple versions, there are command line switches that allow you to load your preferred copy of the game. You'll notice mouse support in the menus, which is hard to live without once you get used to it. Clicking on a directory in the mods list will change to it instantly. No more modified Windows shortcuts or third-party launchers required. 
Starting in version 0.7, there's a levels submenu under single player. If you loaded a mod, the levels menu will display that mod's map list first. There's also a filter in the maps menu that will highlight search terms in the map list. And the maps command in the console will now list their proper names in addition to their BSP file names. There's also support for Quake Remastered add-on URLs. If you haven't seen my video on this, I'll leave a link in the doobly-doo. This feature allows you to download a curated selection of community maps directly from the mods menu. And if and when more community servers come online, you can add those URLs on the command line to change to the server of your choice. When you die, the default is to load the most recent save as opposed to starting over. This works for manual or quick saves, and if the mod you're playing has auto saves, those will work too. Also, saves are now done in a background thread so more complex maps won't hitch when saved. If you'd prefer to have a confirmation prompt, enter the command sv underscore autoload1 in the console. And of course, you can disable this feature too with sv underscore autoload0. This feature works great, and I know, because I die quite often. There's also a periodic autosave feature that will work with any mod or map. Instead of more traditional time or trigger-based saves, the autosave code in Iron Whale looks at things like player speed, location, and health to determine a safe break in the action to save the game. There are two additional HUD styles in Iron Whale in addition to the classic style. These include displays for weapons, ammo, power-ups, and artifacts. And if you're playing the mission packs, those items will be displayed also. There are also additions for multiplayer HUDs like a mini scoreboard with or without player names. Iron Whale 0.7 has support for CSQC or client-side Quake C, which allows modders to code custom HUDs like you'll find in Arcane Dimensions or Alkaline. There's a great new quick zoom command that can be found in the controls menu. The speed, field of view, and zoom amount can all be customized in the console. If you prefer the older zoom method, that's still there. If you are a console power user, Iron Whale has some beautiful new functionality. Tab completion has been improved so you can query any part of a string without knowing the prefix. So for example, typing box and then tab will show every command featuring box in its name. You can then cycle through each option by hitting tab or shift tab to reverse the order. You can also navigate or delete words in a string by using control left, right, backspace, or delete. Iron Whale also allows you to bind the caps lock, num lock, scroll lock, and print screen keys. If you're a fan of the 90s software rendering look with color banding and chunky pixels, you have three different 8-bit options to choose from. You can combine these with pixel scaling to dial in the look you prefer. Here are some settings at 1080p to get you started. In the menu, set render scale to 1 quarter, 8-bit mode to raw, and make sure anti-aliasing is off. Change the UI pixel setting from square to stretched or non-square pixels for a more authentic version of the HUD you might have seen in DOSQuake back in the day. Also, Andre has made improvements to color matching in 8-bit mode, so modern maps with colored lighting look better and older maps will look more authentic. Transparency can cause headaches for OpenGL programmers, and there are occasions where older Quake engines struggle with the rendering order of overlapping transparent textures. Remember, these types of transparent brushes were never in the original game, with the exception of water. Indeed, the first stable implementation of transparent entities didn't come along until Fitzquake 0.85 in 2009. For years, most Quake engines didn't have many options to deal with rendering artifacts that would crop up. Iron Will 0.7 introduces two new methods that can help eliminate these artifacts. One is R underscore alpha sort, which will sort the overlapping brushes by a distance. And the second method is R underscore OIT for order independent transparency. This is a modern method and the results are great in most cases. However, this does impact performance. So players on lower powered PCs should disable this. Even if you don't make levels for Quake, the technology technology in some of these new mapping features is really smartly designed, and for mappers it's pretty mind-blowing stuff. There's a no monsters variable that will work on any mod or map. Normally, this would require a mod like Progs Dump or Copper, and it's nice to have it built into the game engine. 
Bounding boxes are now color coded by type and you can use filter options to only display certain items or conditions like monsters with health remaining, for example. This can help locate monsters that might be stuck in walls or other types of mapping errors. Here I'm filtering to only display bounding boxes for monster army. There's a great new addition to the view size command. View size is how you change the HUD by pressing plus or minus on your keyboard. Previously, view size 120 would clear the HUD off the screen, but keep the weapon model. In 0.7, view size 130 removes the HUD and weapon model, which is handy for screenshots or fly through videos. Speaking of screenshots, Ironwell now saves them to a screenshots folder, but you can customize this in the console by setting a path to your desired location. You can also customize the name of the screenshots with all kinds of variables like BSP name, map title, and specific time and date options. Ironwell has support for light map liquids as well. If you haven't seen my recent video on this game-changing feature, please check it out. Ironwell also supports model scaling. This allows mappers to vary the size of foliage, for example, using the same model. There are some other more wacky things you can do with this feature, but keep in mind the bounding box remains the same, and this requires protocol 999, so not every engine can display this. This next feature is a striking effect called Skywind. This allows mappers to easily animate their skybox via an external config file. It's a subtle effect. You can see it more clearly when I speed things up. Mappers can control multiple parameters like the wind direction and movement speed. And if there are areas of the map that shouldn't move, you can create a modified skybox texture with an alpha channel. Here you can see the original texture on the left and the texture that will be superimposed on the right. For engines that don't support this feature, the skybox will render as usual. Ironwell 0.7 is available for download now. I've got a link down in the doobly-doo. And if you like this content, consider taking a look at some of these videos here.